a very good knowledge to everyone on behalf of the Women Chemist Committee of the Institute of Chemistry Ceylon. It gives me a great pleasure to welcome you all the Sri Lanka Women's Presidency. To start our event, I would like to invite Professor Sriyani Karanagana, the chairperson of the Women Chemist Committee, to welcome you all. Good morning, President and members of the Council of Institute of Chemistry, members of the Women Chemist Committee, members of the Institute of Chemistry Salon who joined through the webinar, teaching assistants and students of College of Chemical Sciences, as the chairperson of the event chemist committee. I welcome all of you to this uh, event, Global Event Breakfast. My special welcome for three eminent events who were invited today to deliver a small speech about their uh, improvement of career and special event chemists to agree to talk a few words at this event and many chemists who joined this event to support us. The chief organizers of Global Women Breakfast is Union is the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, in fact, and around 270 events from 65 countries have been organized and celebrating Global Women Breakfast in IUPAC. Today, Institute of Chemistry Ceylon participate in this event representing the Chemical Society of Sri Lanka and participate as a member of UPAC. Although this is an annual event organized by UPAC, this is the first time in the Sri Lanka participate GWB, Global Women Breakfast. It was decided to organize this event as a hybrid event due to COVID-19 pandemic. Gender equity is a fundamental human right and much needed foundation for a peaceful, prosperous and sustainable world. Some countries are perceived as providing the best opportunity for both genders, but some countries are still weak and not yet being able to accommodate equal chances for both men and women. However, many organizations now with due consideration gender since the empowerment of autonomy of women and the improvement of their education, political, social, economic, and health status is a highly important in itself. The Institute of Chemistry Ceylon established Women Chemist Committee in 2019 when I was the president of Institute of Chemistry Ceylon especially to highlight the goal five of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal, that is achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Therefore, the theme of this event is empowerment of women chemists in all sectors, higher education, other education institutes, industry, and private sector. The main objective of Women Chemist Committee are highlight contribution made by women in the field of chemistry, raise awareness of education and capacity development opportunities of women in chemistry, and promote international solidarity and cooperation. In addition to that Women Chemist Committee will also help to establish a peer group network for collaborating and recruiting. 
discuss new inventions in the field of chemistry made by women chemists, provide advice and counsel for women chemists, provide guidance to under, undergraduate students and postgraduate students in marketing career in making career decisions and provide community support to enhance retention of women in chemistry. Therefore, overall age of women committee of Institute of Chemistry Ceylon are to increase the participation of women and bringing about balanced representation of women and men in all sectors, especially in higher administrative positions and assist women chemists to expand their network of contact both locally and internationally. It is well known in many developing countries, women are facing threat of their lives, health, well-being as a result of being overburdened with work and of their lack of power and influence. Hence, the theme of the today's event is achieving work-life balance. So with that, we have identified three eminent women chemists. One is the senior professor, Jan Talyanage, vice chairman of UDC, and also the senior professor of uh, University of Kalania. Secondly, uh, Professor Chanika Padurdas, Professor in Chemistry, Department of Chemistry of University of Sri Javadanapura, and also as a person who has done well in the industry, uh, is Nankani Ketkir. She is the director of the uh, research and development section of the uh, for the Industries uh, were identified as three eminent chemists uh, for, to deliver their, uh, how, to express their views, how they perform uh, their career very well in the, uh, in the now achieving work uh, with life balance. With that, I conclude my talk. Finally, I will I thank all the chemists, those who joined today, this event. My special thank to Dr. Dinshra Dukala, Secretary of the Women Chemist Committee, for her tremendous contribution in organizing this event. And also, I also thank the, the other women who joined this uh, occasion, and also uh, men chemists who joined this event today, to support and encourage women chemists community too. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now uh, let's move to our networking session. Uh, before that, uh, let me introduce this event to you. Global Women's Breakfast is a network of both women and men working together to address the barriers and the inequalities faced by women in science. Successful Global Women Breakfast were held in 2019 and 2020. In this year, 2021, around 65 countries from all over the world are participating, and there are 267 breakfast events organized all over the world. We are very happy to announce that we are joining the IPAC Global Women Breakfast for the first time. We do hope to continue in the coming years as well. Our theme for today is, as Dr. Paranagama mentioned, achieving work-life balance. We are hoping to have a very interesting networking session and also an interactive discussion session. I hope all of you will stay with us within these one and a half hours to witness that. So moving on to our next step, we have some very respectable women chemists who are joining with us today for the networking session. So, uh, to commence the session, first of all, we have Professor Sriyanti Daranyagala. Over to you, Professor Daranyagala.
Uh, yes. Uh, uh, okay, you can hear me, right, Dinusha? Yes, madam. We can hear. You. Yes, uh, I am Professor Sriyanti Derani Angela. Uh, I am a senior professor at the University of Colombo Department of Chemistry. Uh, about to retire, uh, uh, I will actually be the president of the Institute of Chemistry from July onwards, July 2021 onwards. Um, I have been associated with the university, uh, at least with the Institute of Chemistry, from uh, around 1986. Um, and um, uh, 1986, and I have been uh, associated with the university also for a very long time, over 40 years. Um, so I'm very happy to uh, say a few words. Um, I have, uh, in addition to uh, doing my, I'm organic chemist uh, and having got, got my PhD at Dalhousie House University, Canada, and uh, in organic chemistry, actually bioorganic chemistry. And my uh, I'm sabbatical. When I was on my sabbatical at Connecticut University, Wesleyan University, Connecticut, USA, I worked on. I was I diverted to the field of medicine and chemistry. Uh, my research areas generally have been uh, uh, to study the bioactivity of uh, Sri Lanka flora. Uh, you know, Sri Lanka has uh, has a great biodiversity, and we have a lot of plants which are of much medicinal value. So I, my research interests have been, have been to study the various different bioactivities related to these medicinal plants. Okay, thank you, Dinusha. Uh, then we have Professor Ramani Vijayasekara. Over to you, Professor Vijayasekara. Dinusha, can you see me? And yes, me? yes, madam, we can hear you and we can see you. Okay, so I'm Ramana Vijay Sekara. Uh, I'm a senior professor at the Department of Chemistry, University of Colombo. I was a former head of the department and I served as a head of the department for six years. My term finishing in August last year, that is August 2020. So I think as the head of the department and as a senior member of the department, uh, I considered my most important role to be to serve the students and to uh, basically make it a comfortable place for the staff to, to work in. Because finally the students are, are, are what shall I say, our stakeholders in a sense. We need to serve the students. And in order to serve the students well, we need to have a happy and contented staff. So I firmly believe that it's the people who make the department. That is very important for me. So the infrastructure and the equipment and so on is necessary. But on the whole, I think it's important that, uh, that the people there are encouraged and supported and kept happy because a happy environment means that uh, basically the, the work will get done in a, in a better way and we can serve the students better. So I firmly believe that people are what is important in an institution. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you, madam. Uh, next is Professor Nilmala Kottegoda. Uh, Professor Kottegoda, over to you. Uh, hello, Dinusha. Can you hear me and see me? Yes, madam. We can hear Thank you. you. Thank you for inviting me for this very interesting session. And uh, I'm Nilvala Kotigode, graduated from University of, graduated as a, with a first, first class degree in chemistry from University of Peradeniya. And I obtained my PhD from uh, University of Cambridge. And for the last 13 years, I have been working in Sri Lanka, facing all challenges that a woman can ever face as a researcher, as a mother, as an academic. So I believe that uh, these three challenges, uh, the overcoming of these challenges are very important as a women, woman scientist. So, uh, Many of our young women 
lose their career goals because of these challenges. But I see myself as um, a person who was able to face all these challenges very successfully. So uh, actually, I was uh, a founding member of Slintech, and currently I am the head of the department, you know, head of the department uh, of uh, the Department of Chemistry, University of Sri Jayawardenepura, and I have developed a, a rewarding career with the industry as well. Uh, many of my innovations lead into uh, US patents and some of them, actually three of my projects have already been commercialized and the patents have been commercialized. So uh, at the same time, I became a role model for my son as well. So I think for the young women, uh, this, uh, this is very important task and it's challenging in this country as well but we can we can achieve this uh, as a result of my contribution to the science i also obtained uh, many awards uh, one most prestigious award is the i was uh, nominated as the as one of the nine most in inventive women uh, by the World Intellectual Property Organization in 2018. And also I rece received the uh, Young Scientist Award from TWAS and also the best innovation leading to commercial potential, nas uh, the national award. And also recently I, ob I got the GRC award from uh, SARS. Uh, therefore, I believe that my message to young women scientists is that we can do, we have the energy to do, and we can uh, very efficiently balance our work and life. So we have to be examples to the, uh, to the nation because uh, we can see many of the women scientists are leading the uh, science of this country, which is uh, uh, good news. So I believe we can do it. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Our fourth women chemist is Professor Siddhika. We have her here. Over to you, madam. Hi, boys. Welcome. Assalamu alaikum. I am Sikhik Savira Iqbal. My name, name is Sara, which means peace. I retired as a professor in chemistry from the University of, from the Open University of Japan. After 30 years of continuous service to academia, where I did teaching as well as research. In the chemistry, in chemistry related in that process, I have mentored men and women who, in turn, have begun mentoring their own students. So I feel that I have a huge panel of men and women who are actively in research and teaching. So, actually, uh, I believe that I have been able to inspire women, especially in minority where I come from. Where they consider me as a role model, look up to me, and think that they can become one of one life. So, I believe that I have inspired them in such a way that they have got the attitudes and the work life balance and the work ethics that I have been able to. So, in all their life as well as they are in discharging their duties. So what I have in, I, I think uh, in those areas, I think that I have had an interest in, and I have made sure that this is achievable, which is, we have so few role models in our minority groups. So though I have retired, I believe that they will have given them a message. That that will be possible, that they can work hard and get to whatever they 
maybe at the later stage that may not be very long when they achieve everything. But nothing is really possible. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now let me call upon Professor Nidra Karunara. Over to you, Professor Karunara. Good morning. I hope you can hear me. Um, yes, I, yeah, I'm Nedra Karnaratna. <clears throat> um, I graduated from the University of Colombo, but I work at the University of Peradenia, where I'm currently a senior professor in the Department of Chemistry. Um, when it comes to uh, contribution to education, uh, I have to say that it all started when I was uh, reading for my PhD in carbohydrate chemistry at the University of British Columbia, Canada, uh, as a teaching assistant. And since then, I have been involved in educating undergraduates and postgraduate students in Sri Lanka, <clears throat> starting from biochemistry to medical students and to pure and applied chemistry to science students. And of these, my most significant contribution I would say has been at the Open University of Sri Lanka in the Kandy Regional Center, where I was the only chemistry staff member at the center and I had to almost single-handedly um, attempt to build the image of a regional center where students were compelled to travel to Colombo all the time for various uh, subjects and convert that into a self-sufficient educational institution, which I'm proud to say is functioning very well there. But I left uh, Open University uh, soon after I thought I had achieved what I could and uh, focused on research. Uh, chemistry, I would say, is diversity. And my research has spanned several areas like carbohydrate chemistry, peptides, pharmaceuticals, natural products, and even nanotechnology, which has led to um, several students um, benefiting from my uh, research projects where I have graduated about six PhDs, MPhils, and many MSc students. And some are still continuing, though I will be retiring very soon this year. Um, uh, so as a, a balancing uh, work and life, I think I have been quite successful um, in achieving um, my um, um, research and teaching at Peradenia, as well as looking after my kids and making sure that they did well in their life. Now, recently, my research is focused on industrial applications in food formulations. And I find that chemistry is a very fascinating subject that teaches me new areas to work on and new ideas to bring into reality. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Next, I invite Professor Nidmali Vikramaratna. Professor Vikramaratna, over to you. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you, madam. Yeah, okay. we can see you. All right. Good morning. And I'm Professor Nidmali Vikramaratna, and I'm uh, really glad to be here as a woman in chemistry. And uh, uh, just uh, to brief you about myself, I'm a graduate chemist and I passed out in 1990. And thereafter, I obtained my PhD from Loyola University of Chicago from, in biophysical chemistry. And at present, I'm a, a professor in biochemistry at Sabargam University of Sri Lanka. And uh, I'm at the Department of Biochemistry, Faculty of Medicine. At the same time, I'm the Dean Faculty of Medicine at Sabargam University of Sri Lanka. And uh, throughout my career, I've been uh, quite a lot, uh, the, the time I was in the U UN United States, I was, uh, of course, involved in much in, more in research. And thereafter coming back, I was uh, heavily involved in more in uh, administration. So I have held administrative positions, starting from a head of a department, uh, going to Director Center for Research and Knowledge Dissemination, Director for the Staff Development Center, and uh, at times the uh, Acting Vice Chancellor. And also at this, uh, at this moment, I'm the Dean Faculty of Medicine. 
So being a woman in science and I have been, I think I have been able to contribute in a large manner to uh, the society as well as to the suburb community of Sri Lanka because I contributed quite a lot. I did, a, did take a, a great leadership in to bring the curriculum of the suburb community to, into a four-year degree program uh, to award a BSc special degree in chemical technology. And now I'm heavily involved in uh, uh, contributing my, uh, I mean, contributing tremendously to develop the uh, Faculty of Medicine at the university. Uh, so, uh, for being a woman in chemistry, uh, uh, I would like to generalize a woman in science. We all know 11th of February, we celebrate women in science. So, uh, today we are in a kind of a better platform than, uh, than the days before when the women had to struggle to come into sciences. Uh, so uh, what, what I think is uh, uh, to, for me to come up to this place through, uh, and especially your, uh, I mean, topic for today is the work-life balance. Uh, for the work-life uh, work balance, how I came here today is, one thing was attitude. First thing is attitude to uh, have a positive attitude and accept the defeats or challenges in a positive manner and to go seek for solutions rather than being sulky and hidden. And, uh, and another thing that I did was I ensured that I keep my boundaries. I wouldn't allow uh, to be overburdened. I took the work as into a capacity that I could handle. So I ensured and I told and I made sure that everybody else understands my boundaries, that I would not be overburdened. And then I'm a mother of two and I have a daughter and a son. So I made sure that I spend, do spend time with my children. And uh, that time I made sure sometimes, you know, I would, uh, we will be, when the children are at home yet, we will be having to do some things. So what I did was I got them involved in my activities, even from their childhood, very small days, I used to get them involved in my activities. Uh, when I'm making, I mean, getting myself prepared for a lecture, I used to get them to come and draw the benzene rings and then show them uh, the structures and figures, not that they do understood, but they would like to at least look at it. And I mean, they, they get themselves involved. So, and when they grew up, uh, they used to help me quite a lot, even if when I would say, put the animations into my PowerPoint presentations for which they would do very happily. So I get them involved in my activities. So I don't feel like that I have left them aside and I'm running my life alone. And also, since we have been quite a lot challenged with time and uh, what I used to do is make sure that I have some time for my myself, me time, a little bit of time for myself. So these are some uh, things that I uh, had in my life to uh, have a work-life balance. And uh, uh, for this, actually, I should, uh, I think, even coming from the past, uh, how the women in science came up to this state was through something like what you are doing today, for which I'm very grateful to uh, the president of this uh, Women in uh, Chemistry Society, Professor uh, Paranagama. Thank you for organizing this because this networking, support your peers and mentoring has been three key things that have enabled the women to come into this status today. So maybe there are still, there may be some women who are uh, like uh, challenged, feel burdened. So this kind of networking and supportive system would definitely help them to come out from their shell, shell and to be a creative woman in chemistry. Thank you. Thank you.
Next chemist is Ms. Purnima Jayasinghar. Over to you, Ms. Jayasinghar. Hi. I hope you can hear see me. Yes, Pudipa, we can hear you. We can see you. Okay, very good morning to all of you. Uh, and first of all, let me thank the organizing committee to, call, to invite me to, to uh, introduce myself and to, uh, to have a few words, to care, speak a few words about me. Okay, well, I'm Purnima Jaisinghar and I'm a graduate from the from Institute of Chemistry. And as uh, my first career, I joined the Open University as a demonstrator. There, I'm continuing my um, master's. Uh, in uh, organic chemistry, uh, natural product chemistry. And after that, I joined uh, the, uh, the information services of the Industrial Technology Institute. Actually, now here that I changed my career from a chemist uh, to a, a library uh, as the information officer. I joined as a research scientist, and then because it's a it's the largest technical library where that we provide the info, technical information for the uh, researchers who do research at the institute uh, at the uh, industrial technology institute. So there again, I followed a small uh, diploma course in uh, library science just to get some idea on information searching, and as uh, as a main. Uh, the, the service that we actually do is to like uh, to uh, provide the most current and the relevant information, the re scientific information to the society and for the uh, researchers who are doing uh, research at the institute. Currently, I work as the director of the information services. We are that uh, I are uh, now, now from uh, chemistry. I switch over to information and then you know, do um, more to the administration work. And then uh, what I uh, organize everything like the manage and organize the information services of the Institute of Chemistry. So the actually the message that I want to give the young scientists or the young chemists is that with the basic knowledge of chemistry that you can switch over to any field and to give if you have the commitment and the dedication that you can do your best to the country and to the society so uh, the, with the basic knowledge that uh, uh, that uh, what you get that uh, if you determine that you can do any field of work so that's what i want to give the message to our young especially for the young uh, chemists who are following the institute and other okay? and I take this opportunity to, to wish uh, all the best for our new women chemists and uh, for thanking the organizing committee uh, to organizing this event. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Now we have a young chemist joining us with us, uh, Miss Dara Vikram. We have her here. Hello everyone, I'm Udara Vikrasa. Um, I'm my carbon bachelor. So I can say that I started my career when I was doing my undergrad research at uh, IPM with two amazing supervisors, Dr. Dinesha Vikrasa and Dr. Neva Vikrasa. They inspired me a lot and like um, after one year, uh, we began this very successful research project and like uh, we could develop a product and right now uh, we have applied for a case for that. Uh, it's processing as a painting table. And in the near future, we are looking to commercialize the product. And uh, I can say, like, after uh, doing the research, I, could, I got a chance at Swing Tech to work as a research scientist. Actually, they hired me when I was just an undergrad. Uh, so um, I have joined them for like one year now to try working as a research scientist. I get to work with different fields, like with graphene uh, related research, with advanced materials, with organic and uh, natural products. So, out of all research projects, uh, I could highlight some of the projects uh, that I think that I could directly contribute to the country and society. 
uh, to begin with, like uh, swabs are uh, one of the massive causes that we get excited. So, in the terms of uh, global pandemic, COVID 19, the world wasn't ready, the uh, country wasn't ready, so we didn't have enough facilities to do the PCR testing. So, in order to do the PCR testing, the, the swabs are needed, the swabs are needed to move, like, collect the specimens. And uh, basically, same side to the first step, and uh, the science is like we will have the swabs at uh, Sri Lanka, and now uh, we are manufacturing swabs. And I was given the responsibility as a polycatural city uh, in one of the swab chains. So, my duty is uh, to check the quality and uh, all the statistics. And uh, if we do not uh, give them the proper samples, then the PCR results will fall. So, that my duty, uh, I think I'm really happy to uh, work in that project. And uh, also, another project that I can highlight is the, the government related project, that is to uh, clean Vera Lake. Uh, we know that Vera Lake has this uh, algae issue, and uh, like you can uh, feel the order from kilometers away, like when you pass it. So, the government wanted us to give a solution. So, I'm part of the science team of that project. So, what I do is, like, uh, we found a proper solution to treat this algae issue at Vera Lake. Not only Vera Lake, we are focusing on other lakes too. So we have done pilot runs and it is very successful. And uh, finally, like, I want to uh, emphasize like a project that I have pitched. So uh, I want to make a new trend in women on cosmetics because like a lot of women are used to uh, use these synthetic cosmetics and all, especially these beauty creams. Uh, so they don't know the side effect that they can get from by using these cosmetics. So basically, there, there will be a lot of complications of using these things. So what I want to do is like I, I want to make them aware of using these uh, synthetic cosmetics. So I want to replace these synthetic cosmetics with natural cosmetics. So I have developed 100% uh, natural cosmetics to treat different uh, skin problems such as acne, melasma, hyperpigmentation, uh, aging problems, and wrinkle problems. So uh, right now we are in the process to um, inform other people about this and like we have contacted all the, uh, like, well, not all the, like some of the uh, leading cosmetic manufacturers in Sri Lanka to uh, continue with this project. I think they really like the idea because they are also aware of uh, using these creams and all. So uh, like I think that uh, these are the projects that I can highlight that where I can contribute to the country. So I'm still a young scientist, so I have a long way to go. So I'm looking for opportunities uh, where I can uh, work with the country. And uh, yes, and uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this. Thank you, Ms. Next is Ms. Geetika Yapa. Ms. Yapa, over to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I am Dr. Geetika Yapa. Uh, first, I want to uh, thank the Institute of Chemistry and uh, Professor Priyani Paranagama for inviting me to speak a few words at this important and timely event. Uh, actually, I am a product of uh, University of Colombo. And in fact, Professor Ramani Vijay Sekhar and myself, we are batchmates and we graduated in 1983. Uh, I was the founder, head of the research division of the National Science Foundation of Sri Lanka uh, from 2005 to 2018, uh, that is uh, 13 years. And actually, uh, during that time, it was a big responsibility. We had around five research grant schemes and then we also had the research equipment and spare parts for research equipment grant scheme as well as as well as two award schemes so and i am very happy to see that many of the eminent uh, resource persons today are in fact nsf uh, research grant recipients and research equipment grant recipients then in 2019 and 2020, I uh, functioned as the head of the journal publication division, uh, giving leadership to the uh, only journal in Sri Lanka to be indexed in the Science Citation Index Expanded, which is the journal of the National Science Foundation. And then we also 
NSF also has the Sri Lanka Journal of Social Sciences, which is only one, which is one of the only five journals to be indexed in the Emerging Social Citation Index. And in uh, 2010, I accompanied my husband to Canada when he went on sabbatical. And because of my training and at the NSF in the research division, I was able to get a placement as a visiting scholar at the Center for Policy Research in Science and Technology at the Simon Fraser University. And I up to and uh, to date, I keep contact with my professor there, who has uh, who has allowed me the use of the computer network at the SFU uh, until his retirement in 2019. Uh, then I retired after I retired from the NSF in uh, December 2020, just uh, one and a half months ago. And uh, uh, my most significant contribution to society, I would say, is facilitating the research and developmental activities in all fields of science and technology of Sri Lankan scientists when I was in the research division, enabling them to enhance their research careers and also to, which, which is very, very important, guide and train young and budding scientists to take up research careers. And while at the same time, these uh, SNT, while at the same time, these scientists were able to contribute to the socio-economic development of the country through their impactful research findings. Now, as far as balancing work and life, I would say that uh, it has not been easy because in addition to my own family, I have one son. I looked after my parents also. Now I still look after my mother. Uh, so it was through, I think, sheer hard work uh, and total commitment that I was able to achieve the objectives of the two divisions that I headed at the National Science Foundation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam.